stop that distro until I get around to installing Chakra, which I intend to do this weekend. So I'm not looking at it as a point of a review, but I found quite a few uh, glaringly bad issues. For some reason, and I haven't looked into this, so please, if anybody can uh, elaborate and tell me, yeah, you need to do this or you're not doing this properly, please let me know on my uh, email or on my site. But I've noticed a lot of issues with Compiz, um on this particular release of uh, Mint. And... Um, one of the strange bugs that I've had, which I haven't been able to pin down at the moment, is when I first switch my machine on, it goes to the login screen. If I don't log in within the first, I think, five or ten minutes where my where the screen blanks itself, when I try to reinitialize the screen, the screen is skewed, is probably the best way to describe it. Um, and it requires several flicks around with the mouse and switching the monitor off and on and I don't I can't w- work out what the fault is whether it's an issue with my hardware which I, I don't particularly think it is or an issue with the distro itself so that was one issue that stood out uh, quite well because what well, I normally do graphics card Mind yourself, if you say that you have issues with compies I don't I don't know what you mean by skewed but if it's just it's, image projected like weirdly kind of Twirled. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks yeah. like, uh, the best example is, if you imagine the wobbly windows effect, when you first open up a window, it sort of enlarges itself on the screen and bounces back to shape. It's out of shape. Um, now I know it's not my, I had to say, no, it's not my hardware. I believe it's not my hardware because I've run every other sort of check and it hasn't done this on any other distro or um, anything else. And it certainly doesn't do it while the things, while I'm running. I mean, I've been playing a lot of quite graphically intensive games. There's been no fault at all. Um, the other thing, again, just a, a little a little issue, is that um, in my apps manager, when it shows you what the app, the applications that are running currently in memory and if there's any alerts, very handy because I, I love it when I've got messaging uh, IRC. It gives me a little flashing icon down at the bottom. So, but the one thing I've noticed is just randomly the applications will disappear. Now, I thought that was a case of them being closed down, and on further investigation, it wasn't. They're actually still running. Um, so I, I just looked at my... Uh, I looked at my system util just to see what was running in memory, and they were still running. It's just for some reason their icons keep popping off my apps uh, manager. So that was something else I had to look at. But like I say, I'm not looking at this as a review, and I haven't been looking into why yeah. this is being caused. It's an interim thing, and just to say that I have have used it. But apart from, I, I mean, it, what I would say, I mean, what I would say first of all though is that in every other aspect, it's very very user friendly. I mean, anybody who comes to Linux from Windows or Apple or from a Mac, or whatever, are going to instantly get every feature if they wish up and ready on their machine. Um, it, it's a really, really good distro for for getting people just connected and ready to go out of the. I might, no, I'm not going to use that word. Uh, ready to go straight away. So it, it is very good. And once it's running, there's been no uh, there's been no crashes itself. I've um, I've been having quite a bit of fun with it, and it's 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 very quick as well. Uh, boot up and shut down times. Yeah. Very good. Uh, the reviews I've seen of that were actually quite positive, so I don't mm. really know if it's a uh, an issue with hardware not being well supported. You have to remember, uh, you need to move to uh, try and use copies to work better with Unity. So I don't. So I know that Mint is going to have a hard time going back to GNOME mm. when basically all they do is hack on Ubuntu and try to change it to be easier, and they have to like toss everything canonical. Mm. Well, this they is running. Put the bits together. I mean, this is running GNOME uh, 2.3, 2.1, um, and it shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any issues. Um, I was, like I say, I, I'll have to look into it further if, if, yeah. um, if I want to identify In the future the release, what I imagine they'll do is take from, uh, as you probably know, uh, Ubuntu is moving to a new login manager, so it's going to be a lot more... It, it, it reminds me of what they wanted to do around 2007, which was to do a kind of a 3D uh, login manager, special effects and whatever. So uh, it seems like it might happen in the next version of Ubuntu or maybe the one after that. Uh, well, I mean, uh, like, like I say, this is uh, this will be removed at some point over the weekend because I fully intended uh, from the outset to be moving over, looking at uh, Chakra and KDE. And I'm quite excited about that, really, because it's the first time I've... I'm going to properly devote some time to uh, to KDE and uh, give that a run. So that's going to be on my main rig, hopefully as of tomorrow. So, I did I did use uh, Linux Mint 10. I haven't burned to a CD. I really enjoyed it. It's using GNOME obviously mm. uh, by default. I used it for almost a week. Like I went back to KDE after a while uh, for no special reason other than well I'm used to the programs in KDE, but uh, GNOME. Th- 
2.3 point something. It's, it's pretty decent. It's doing all the uh, the things I needed uh, as long as I could run my KDE applications, which kind of tells me what the issue is. I shouldn't be using GNOME basically to run the KDE applications. I probably should be using the GTK one. But the uh, yeah, I was using this for a while. I really enjoyed it. It was very easy. What I what pretty much amazed me. That's probably a feature of Ubuntu. Is so that when you try to add a dongle base network is it's got the it's asking for which country you're in and then it gives you the name of the providers and it tries to auto complete all the details for you so so it's actually easier than it would be to, for you to you know to use a dongle on Linux and everything in Windows because it's it's actually asking you which company you bought it from and it's trying to do all the rest for you, even the password, everything. Uh, based on just a wizard that's asking all these questions. Uh, absolutely amazing that they did that. Uh, so again, this is a, a thing that we basically inherits many things from Ubuntu and gets credit for things which aren't exactly its own making. Well, just a quick honourable mention, I think, um, to another distribution which I've uh, very quickly seen. Uh, I think I mentioned before that I've installed quite a few uh, distributions, uh, quite, a, quite a bit of Linux for different uh, users over the years. And uh, one of my uh, subjects, as it were, um, has taken it upon himself to to distro hop himself and now found himself a new hobby and he showed me the other day uh, a nice little distro called mini no now i hope i'm saying that right that's all mm. one word there'll be a link link on the show notes now this is a, a debian based linux distro and it's apparently designed for pcs that are uh, 10 years old or more um from what i saw of it it's absolutely fantastic uh, really really punchy really fast even on old hardware and it's something that we're going to be exploring in the future because there's obviously an abundance of hardware which is now officially dead which is no reason not to try and install a Linux distributions like this on it and there's maybe a potential there to, to resurrect a lot of old hardware um, it looks really nice it's, it looks surprisingly nice actually for, for a distribution that's intended for a very uh, low spec machine now by today's standards um, uses ice windows manager it's, it looks really good. Well, there'll be a link on the show notes, and possibly I'll be looking at more detail uh, later on on the OpenByte site because uh, I was quite impressed by looking at it. It certainly looked modern. It certainly didn't look lightweight or uh, cut down uh, for, for older machines. So I'll, I'll be looking at that later Speaking on. Speaking of older machines and things which are based on a uh, Debian distributions or this Ubuntu, have you heard anything about Netrunner? <laughs> yeah, it came to my attention that developers could t- seems to to like my side because I I was criticizing Mono for a while. The developer was also kind of agreeing with me we shouldn't have Mono, and I believe he started a distribution by taking Ubuntu and uh, removing Mono from it and trying to put replacements, which the developer himself fancied a bit more. And I think it's I think it's getting a bit of traction recently. Yeah. It's funny you mention that because. Um... As I said earlier in the show, I've been out of the news for like the last week with work and uh, different family commitments. So, but what I did notice is my site was getting a lot of hits from DistroWatch, and um, it was getting the DistroWatch link was the one regarding Netrunner. So I assumed by that that there was a, a new version out, and that having looked quickly before we started recording this on uh, on DistroWatch site, it does appear that there's a new version. Um, there'll be a link in the show notes to DistroWatch. I think that's probably more more relevant because I reviewed Netrunner in 2010, I think it was about July off the top of my head and uh, no, it was um, I'm desperately trying to pull the, my old review up very quickly but I certainly was impressed by it um, I believe it was KDE this time, let me just check um, I think it was K- I think at first it was a uh, I think the first release 1.0 was more similar to Ubuntu and I believe that in 2.0 it moved to KDE now we think it's based on Kubuntu or which I happen to be using at the very moment, uh, should mention that. No, I've just I've just called up the article on the site. I I looked at Netrunner uh, in July 2010, uh, called Blacklight, and it was yeah, it was KDE. Um, and I was uh, look, it's dreadful when you've got to read your own words and remember what you put. So, uh, so yes, I, I was I was very impressed with it, and uh, certainly I'll be looking at the later version. But I would put the link in the show notes to the Distro Watch Maybe because they'll have. Yeah. Maybe it's a good choice for people who are trying to avoid Unity, to be honest. If you say that you have some issues with uh, with uh, Linux Mint, maybe we could recommend people give a try to... Uh, yes, certainly. I mean, if, yeah. if the new version, and I haven't seen the latest version 
at the moment. But if it, if it's anything like Blacklight, which I covered about a year ago, it's it's certainly a very very good piece of a uh, it's, it's certainly a very good distribution. So if it's based on Kubuntu, I, I could put in a bit of an endorsement here. I happen. 